lost a lot of weight. Me? Yeah. So this is the camera. Mm -hmm. That's um, big. Yeah. Do you know Bert? So first impressions of using this on my first portrait shoot with the Phase One camera, it is really heavy. This actually feels like like a real man's camera. Here it's gonna let Cheyenne just hold it, because the first time we shot, we shot with the Pentax 645Z, and I think this may be heavier than the Pentax. It doesn't have JPEGs. It only shoots in RAW. You can only choose large RAW or small RAW, I believe. Uh, very limited options, no auto ISO. And so the auto ISO, oh, sorry, the auto white balance is turning kind of coolish, kind of too blue. So I changed it to daylight and the daylight was coming in uh, really nice, really nice colors. Uh, so first impression so far, yeah, heavy, kind of like romance camera. Um, but we're gonna shoot for maybe about 40 more minutes in this outfit and um, we'll have a second outfit kind of near the beach. Right, we've been shooting for about 10 minutes. Cheyenne, you're no stranger to the channel. This is actually, I believe, your third time. Mm -hmm. First time, like I mentioned before, it was with the Pentax 645Z, which, is, which was a medium format camera. And this is a medium format camera, which provides like the best ultimate image quality. How do you like the photo so far? I really like... I know it's only um, been like short time, 10, 15 minutes shooting, but against the sunlight. I like the sunlight, I like the vibe of mm -hmm. the photo shoot so far. Um, from like the modeling perspective, like I like how um, you kind of get like a cue, like every time you take a shot. Um, it makes a beeping sound. Mm -hmm. The digital back makes a beeping sound, letting the model photographer know um, it's ready for the next photo. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I know when to like switch my pose. Um, what else? That's a good point. Um, it is kind of heavy. Very heavy. So I don't yeah. know if I'd be able to like use this for a while, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else do I like about it? I like how I can literally see like a click with each like. Um, also through the lens, you actually see the aperture opening and closing. Yes, that from my perspective. You can look through the viewfinder. It's actually. The viewfinder in the Phase One DF Plus is actually very large. Mm -hmm. It's not an electronic viewfinder, so it's optical. So what you see is you know what you get in in real life, versus looking through an electronic screen like the Sony on our last YouTube video. Um, but yeah, the optical viewfinder is very bright. Um, it does take maybe 10 seconds for the camera to start up. Mm -hmm. um, but once it's start up, it's started already. It's good to go, and it'll go to sleep, and then you know just tap the button, and nice. then it'll turn back on. So startup, I don't think it's really an issue, but I read that when it's starting up, it's doing kind of like a memory card check, system check, because mm -hmm. it only has one memory card inside, but it does some kind of file system checks uh, to make sure the card doesn't get corrupted and you lose all your photos. Yeah. Okay. But it's hard to see on a small screen, but when I get home and you know look at the photos on the computer, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. And great modeling so far. Thank you so Very much. Good. Okay, we'll keep on shooting. <laughs> the method of using this um, older camera is I focus on her eyes and I wait for the confirmation beep, as you can hear, that it's in focus. Then I recompose, then I take the shot. Sometimes with this older body, the Phase 1 DF Plus, uh, let me focus on the background, the focus back on Cheyenne. It doesn't focus right away, so I gotta kinda tap, tap again the shutter button. There you go, and then now it's in focus. So a little bit slower way of working versus my Sony mirrorless camera that's pretty quick, but it can actually help you become a better photographer, making you think of your shots. Good, one, two, three. All right, let's head down. Make sure, let me look. Bring 
being blocked by the clip line. Down to that side, it'll be all sand here. This is fine. See fish eyes right there. Phase one system compared to like the Pentax 645Z and like the GFX medium format series of cameras. It's like a modular system where if I want to upgrade the sensor, I can actually take out the back, put on a different sensor. If I want to upgrade the body to the new XF body, which has like a nice touch screen on the top of the body, I can sell the DF plus body and get the XF and of course I'll also change lenses. Um, but I set the camera to speed. There's an option in the menu, the custom function menu. You have to turn the dial to CF for custom function. And there's two options for the focusing speed or accuracy. I have it to speed just so it can focus really quickly. And then I can worry about the beep uh, for the accuracy. Um, I haven't really tried it on the accuracy part, but when I was testing it out on my own on still objects, the accuracy seems like to be a little bit slower but I would prefer the faster speed just to get focus on your face first and then take the shot. Um, how are the, I know it's again hard to see the back of the screen, but how are you liking the photos so far? I am obsessed and I can't wait to see the final version. Yeah, uh, the good thing with the Phase 1 is of course it works with their own software, Phase 1 Capture 1, so it's going to really maximize the IIQ raw files, so can't wait to go home and look at the files. Probably going to shoot a couple more minutes here and then do a second outfit change mm -hmm. and head down to a different location. You see the framing? One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Uh, your right leg a little bit more towards. All right, um, the IQ150 back is actually a nice 3.2 inch touchscreen, 1.15 million dots. Very easy to swipe through the photos and double tap to zoom in. Uh, Cheyenne is here, you can come in, uh, in her second outfit. I chose this place because it's very windy and hopefully we can kind of play around with uh, the cover up um, that you're wearing right, right now. The, gosh, yeah, so touchscreen is pretty nice. Viewfinder covered is pretty nice. The uh, IQ150 back does have a lock here, so you'd accidentally press a button to unlock it. And it just has one compact flash card. So second outfit, hopefully it's not raining, it's a lot overcast, which is good for lighting because it's very soft. Uh, but different lens I'm using, 150 millimeter 2.8. This is the same kind of lens I use on a 645Z where it just blows out the background. Yeah, the first shoot we had. And earlier I was using the 80 millimeter 2.8 lens. Okay, we'll start shooting. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so this is how it looks like inside. It basically only has like three focus points. One focus point here, focused. Okay, sorry, I'm taking photos through the, the camera. Okay, one more time, focusing on Cheyenne's face. Green, sorry, green circle meaning focus, taking a shot. Do you see that square line around the frame? That means that's only what the IQ150 back is capturing. It's the same sensor that's in the GFX 50S, Penta 645Z, kind of like a crop medium format. So get, she's on focus, taking a shot. There you go. Let's 
coming. Did you get wet? No. It's like a, no, no, it's like a music video. I swear I focus on your eyes. This one, this one. So we're done with our photo shoot. We've been shooting for about an hour and 30 minutes. I just checked the battery life of the digital back. There's actually two batteries. One for the body, which is full battery. One for the digital back, batteries underneath. I started at 100%, hour and a half later, down to 75%. I don't know how many files that I've taken. I think it might be around 100 some. Some pros and cons about this. Of course, the pros is, it's using the Mamiya 645 mount, so you can use other Mamiya lenses. They're kind of affordable, at maybe eight or $900. This one, 52.8, very good portrait lens. Uh, you can probably find this used for around $900. The Schneider lens I was using, the 80 millimeter 2.8, you can find it used for around, I believe, five or $600. Very sharp lenses, uh, very good bokeh, nice contrast as well. Uh, the cons of this um, IQ150 camera system, of course, is very heavy. It's kind of expensive because the back alone used is around $5,000. The body may be about 1,000 or 1,500. So you're looking at maybe with a nice lens, a high tide, I guess, water's coming in. Maybe around ten thousand dollars for a good IQ one hundred and fifty uh, system, especially if you get the XF body. Uh, those use around four or five thousand dollars. If I really like the Phase One IQ one hundred and fifty system, I may upgrade to the XF. Uh, still not sure. Um, I can't think of any other cons. Focusing with the DF Plus body uh, takes some time to get used to. Again. Uh, a lot of lenses for the Mimia 645 mounts. Cheyenne, what? So right now Cheyenne's actually starring the photos. <laughs> Which one she really likes? Um, how many have you starred so far? Honestly, I'm laughing because I start a lot, and I'm like, um, maybe that's too much. <laughs> it's okay. I'll look through everything, <laughs> uh, and you can start for one through five. Five being, of course, your most favorite, and of mm -hmm. course, I edit those. Mm -hmm. But uh, what do you think about the shoot overall? Um, it was a great shoot, as per usual. It's always a great shoot with James. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just excited to see the final product. Yes, I am too. Mm -hmm. Of course, Cheyenne is very easy to work with. Um, we have to remind the viewers that you're Miss Photogenic in the pageant before. And so just working with you is very easy. You know how to change a pose every time you hear the, the beat coming from the camera body. Uh, very easy, just take the shot. I just got to worry about my composition and that's that's about it. But, no, yeah. I feel like I get to work with great photographers like you, so. Thank you so much. Yeah, it just makes it easier for me, for each other. <laughs> yes, teamwork. Yes. yes, makes the dream work. <laughs> yeah, makes the dream work. All right, everyone, thank you for watching another episode of Guam Photography. If you haven't, please subscribe. Bye. All right, we are home now. Let's take a look at some RAW files. The extension for the RAW files from the phase one is IIQ. And of course, you can only open it with Capture One, which phase one owns. A lot of people have been asking me which camera system, either the Hasselblad X1D, the Fujifilm GFX 50S2, the um, Penta 645Z, which files are the best because they essentially use the same Sony 50 megapixel medium format sensor even the phase one, of course. And I would have to say, I would always say that the 645Z files, the DNG files are the best. But of course, after using phase one's raw files, it pairs, of course, perfectly with capture one, and you actually get the best colors and best dynamic range. Dynamic range according to photons to photos, as you can see by the chart, I'm gonna show you on screen, it does have more dynamic range than the other Sony identical 50 megapixel medium format chips. I think phase one sacrificed higher ISO for more dynamic range in this chip. But when you pair it with 
phase phase one's raw converter capture one i would have to say that these files are my favorite over the penta 645z but if you don't compare the phase one files i would say 645z files beats the gfx and the um, Hasselblad x1d files so let's get on the computer right now these first photos uh, i'm showing you here the white balance was set to auto the auto white balance and the iq150 is very very white it makes the white balance super white what i have to do is set it to daylight and when i did set it to daylight the colors became a little bit more natural as i was seeing seeing it in real life the first example i want to show you and again they're in iiq format this has been unedited zooming in 100 percent a lot of detail i know this focus even 200 percent you can see uh, th this is why sometimes I miss uh, medium format. All the detail here, 200% on Cheyenne's eyes. Now, how I edited these files is very easy. I went up to Style. I went to Built-in Styles. I went to Spring and chose Spring number one to give it that color. Then I went to Adjust and I just lowered down. Look at the highlights on um, Cheyenne's skin here as I lowered down the highlights. I'm learning the highlights all the way to negative 100 and you get every detail on her skin back even her clothing very nice and then I'll do of course exposure adjustment a little bit lower here increase contrast just a little bit and basically I would import this raw file into Photoshop and do some skin correction and that's basically it to these files again here raw file hasn't been touched you would think that highlights are blowing out her skin. A lot of dynamic range in this file is lower down highlights to negative 100. And boom, there you go. All the detail is kept. Again, I will just go to style, spring number one, which overwrites the um, highlights, bring it back down to negative 100. Uh, a little bit more contrast. And that's basically it. And sharpness here, uh, no doubt, super sharp. You can even go to refine and adjust the sharpness from 140 to even like 200, and it's just very sharp, but it looks natural. Next raw file I want to show you here is this. And while I was shooting the Phase One DF Plus, the focus point in the center I think is a little bit large, so I was trying to aim for Cheyenne's eye. But what happened was I got the tip of her hat. So I focus on the tip of her hat versus her eye. But zooming out, you can't really uh, tell them much of a difference. Uh, if you do lower down high, or no, let's do style again. Spring number one, adjustments, negative 100. Zooming out like this, it looks good. You can't really tell on if you upload it to uh, the internet on the web platform, hard to tell. So next we're off file here. This has been unedited and zooming in 100%. Of course, um, Cheyenne's face is very sharp. I just focused on her face and I can, I'm going to do a reset here. This is how it looks like unedited. And I just go to shape and I can adjust the angle, line up the horizon and style spring one. And then adjustment is lower down the highlights all the way and get all that detail back. You can even just ex exposure if you want and then contrast and that's basically what i did to like all the photos very nice details kept in in the the highlights let's just boost up the shadows just to see how the details are and keep in mind this is shot at iso 100 and there you go it's there's no noise at all iso 100 this like this is one of the reasons why uh, you shoot medium format really nice Same thing with here. I focus on her face, but again, the focus point is kind of large and I'm also focused on, on her hand. Okay, uh, next example I want to show you here. This is the second outfit. Doing a full reset. And this is how it looks like straight out of camera. It was very gloomy. The clouds are coming in. And the style I used here was Spring 7. 
and this is where I just did the adjustments for exposure and contrast and again I did skin correction in uh, capture uh, sorry skin correction in Photoshop uh, now what surprised me is depending on the light let me show you the last photo here uh, this has been untouched unedited and the white balance was set to daylight uh, I think the colors coming out of this camera is very nice the dynamic range is very good let me increase the shadows all the way i don't see any noise in cheyenne's hair i'll focus this on her right eyeball let's let me do a reset again how i edit spring number seven lower down highlights all the way i think that's good maybe just just a contrast contrast a little bit and edit in photoshop for skin correction as you can see some of the other files here are out of focus and out of 122 pictures, so maybe about 15, and here's another one, maybe out of focus. About 15 is out of focus. No, this one's pretty sharp. Again, this is the, with the Mamiya 152.8, very sharp. I think this one's out of focus. Yeah, just a little bit slightly. Uh, I see another one that's in focus. This one should be in focus. Oh no, it's not. So my hit rate is maybe two out of 10 that's not uh, in focus. Uh, this one should be super sharp. Oh yeah, it is very sharp, even at 200%. I was talking to Brett Hartman and he was saying that um, his experience with the phase one system uh, that he sold me, about three out of 10 won't be like tag sharp. And that could be due to the older uh, phase one DF plus body, has an older focus algorithm in it but i heard that the phase one xf is a like, way better in focusing so i may upgrade to that in the future thank you everyone for watching guam photography and if you haven't please subscribe